Doodle Bud doing my top five best and worst fountain pens of 2021. But before I get started, thought I'd wish everybody a quick Merry Christmas. Within this beautiful handcrafted box, I have my top five favorite pens of 2021. And then within this plastic bag, meant to pick up steaming dog excrement, I have my top five worst pens of 2021. Before I reveal the top five, I'm going to show you some honorable mentions really quick. So first up is this Milano from Osprey Pens. I've really enjoyed it. One, this was the first company to reach out to me to do a review. So that was pretty cool. They also gave out a uh, promo code, the Doodle Bud, for 10% off any purchases you make. I really like this pen. It looks beautiful. Um, they also have a lower one for price point wise, but you can get all the different nibs. They have tons of nib selection. The Zebra G, this thing is the one that got me kind of toying around, playing my hand with calligraphy and their regular nibs are wonderful as well. I really like it. Nothing so much wrong with the pen. Just didn't make the top five, but that deserves an honorable mention. Also up is the Peter Draws Special Edition Narwhal pen. Again, I really like it. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the, the nib sizing is off a little bit. Wish the fine was more like a fine versus a medium, but I actually think I'm going to give this one a grind. This will make a perfect cursive italic pen. Really well made. The price points bang on. Uh, yeah, comfortable in the hand. It's inked all the time. I use it quite a bit. Just didn't quite make it. Got this one here. This was really great too. This was sent to me by uh, Platypus Pens out of Australia, 3D printed. I use this thing so much. It just writes all the time, really super smooth, really enjoy the pen, uh, very unique with the 3D printing. So great pen. Uh, also here, the Jinhao 86, very surprised for the two to $3. I think it is under three Canadian bucks for this thing. Uh, this is, you know, to uh, copy or whatever you want to do it. Uh, commemorate the new Parker 51, which I didn't buy. Uh, but for this price, same thing. Three turns is a bit much, you know, a little more than I like. Um, but again, it writes pretty well. It's the smoothest of all of the uh, Parker 51 kind of knockoff pens that I've come across. I do like the cap on this one. It's got some heft to it. They went with a plastic insert to not mash up these plastic threads. It fits nice. So um, this would be, a, I definitely recommend this pen for a starter pen. I got nothing bad to say against this pen really, uh, but there's just some better pens that <laughs> we're gonna make the top five. And my Pelican 140, uh, this was in my top three pens. That was really cool. I got included with that this year at the Apple Boom top three pens. Again, love it, the Semi-Flex. You know, wish it was a touch bigger, but nothing against it. It fits quite comfortable in the hand. So really enjoy this pen. Uh, also didn't include it because it's already in a, in a list out there. So I thought let's not double count, but let's move on to the best of the heap. Let's pop open the top five box and see what we got. Nothing so far because we're going to be a little more suspenseful and add them in one by one. So first up is the Opus 88 Omar. I love this pen. Um, you know, great size, fits my hand, tons of ink capacity, eyedropper. I got a full review in this, so you can watch that. I'm not going to be doing full reviews in this video, um, but nothing you really, I can, I could ding against this pen. It does have a too many turns, kind of like the Jinhao 86, but um, I do like this pen quite a bit more than the Jinhao, but it fits lots of different nibs. So I got an extra fine and a 1.5 stub from uh, Opus with this but you can also fit in other nibs. So right now this has one of the Jin Haos that I'm sending out, the Curse of Italic. I was out of town for a few days here. That's where I got the Skookum hat from. I was up in uh, Tofino, but I'm uh, going to be sending those custom ground nibs out next week once I'm back at it, but it can take all sorts of nibs. Number six is even the Pilot Parallel. So beautiful pen all the way around. That's making it in the top five. Again, in no particular order is this wonderful Schaefer PFM. This is the version five, uh, green with gold. Absolutely love it. Had a fun time restoring this pen and even uh, Steph gave his two cents and said it did a good job. So when Grand Mia comes in, he's the granddaddy of pen restorations on YouTube. So uh, tickled pink to get that comment from him. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a lovely, it's like a writer's pen. It just sits so nicely in my hand. That beautiful inlay nib, uh, this crazy 
snorkel uh, snorkel filler system so you turn it out here and out comes this snorkel so that's really cool is this the best filling system on the planet absolutely not uh standard cartridge converters probably makes a little more sense nowadays but it is really unique nonetheless but absolutely beautiful pen writes so well very classy love my schaefer pfm keeping it vintage is this Mont Blanc 24. So beautiful pen, like, you know, they're classic black Mont Blanc pen, but with this one in particular, this has this oblique broad nib. And I did a video on this one. Uh, it's even tough for me to write and talk at the same time with this pen because it just writes so wonderfully. But I, uh, I said this was the best pen I've ever written with. And I think it still holds after the other ones I have so far. Of course, that could change at any time. But I really enjoy this pen. Nice little ink window. Piston filler. Posts nicely. Nice and light and just fits in your hand super well. Now, you know, the, the uh, sweet spot is a little bit small with that nib. But once you get it, it's just like magic happens with the uh, pen on the page. So really enjoy this pen works exceptionally well and also this was kind of special i want to thank everybody for this pen who's been watching uh, because i saved up a couple of my ad revenue checks that i got from the channel so i monetized this year that was pretty cool thanks again to everybody and this was the first pen i bought so i saved a few months worth got a good deal on ebay so thank you to everybody who's been watching and following subscribing commenting all of that uh, this pen was because of you Number four, you saw the pen be used in writing out the 12 days of Nibmus. That is the good blue. So I was super thankful. Again, this was a pen that was sent to me. So whether I paid for it myself or whether it was sent to me had no bearing on uh, my top five or top five worst pens. But I really enjoyed this one, especially I think it came at the right time. Like the, the Osprey pen, as I mentioned, kind of got me started in it. So I've really been playing with that. And then this pen came along and I liked the, uh, the, especially this untipped calligraphy nib that he's got on there. That's really great. The regular flex is great, but you get those thinner line variations and it is, it's just a little easier to write with than the Zebra G and you don't have to worry about the corrosion as much as well. Although I am super curious to try out their Fosbronze nib on that Osprey. So stay tuned if I get my hand on one of those, but I really enjoy this one. I think it's a little bit heavier. I kind of like a heavy pen too. So um, I know typically for calligraphy, you probably want a light pen, but I just, with my hand uh, and you know, I'm untrained. So maybe this is probably a rookie kind of thing. I like a bit of a heavier pen, but just the machining of it blew me away. Got to chat a lot with Sunil in the making of his pen. And he'd ask me a few questions, give a few suggestions and, and chat a little bit about pens. So that was really great as well. So yeah really love this pen can't say anything bad about it and especially for his first try this pen will only get better as time goes on last up i'm going to cheat a little bit because it's going to be one and it's little buddy so these were also <laughs> this was also sent to me but this was from enso um you know i hadn't heard about them and i some one of the viewers mentioned to me their pens that i should probably check them out so i did i, I paid for this one myself mentioned i was going to give it a review and he sent out a few extra pens there's a couple more actually have to review those will come up and uh, i really really enjoy this pen i like the, the weight of it the feel of it uh, i am a metal pen fan even the uh, fabric castell emotion and all black that's a metal pen i really enjoy that too i do like metal pens so probably that's just a personal preference thing but this pen was a ton of fun and sharp looking pen on its own, but this isn't one you can find in stores because I also anodized this pen. So I think that maybe has a little bit to do with it, but this is a titanium pen and I did an at home uh, titanium anodizing video. It didn't do that well. I thought people would go nuts about it. So if you haven't watched it, check it out. But I'm going to I'm going to strip the whole pen down again and redo it and play with other colors, make it a little bit more vibrant. So that to me, that was really cool. I'm actually in the middle of it right now. I was uh, you can do just different parts. I know that doesn't match, but I'm going to be redoing this whole pen. But I was playing on this. This is the titanium nib. And I thought maybe a color that sort of goes well with that. This kind of matte gray I was playing with the anodizing a little bit more. The standard steel nib it comes with I've tried is very good, too. So. Um, yeah, this has been a very good daily writer for me. It's got a nice weight to it. 
fits in the hand and I love how it writes and uh, snuck in its little buddy, this little pocket pen. This is the Puma pocket pen from Enso as well. This thing is probably uh, on me 24 seven. This is probably the pen I've used the most the whole year. If I had to bring it to one pen for the whole year, I might even pick this as my top one just because I've used it so much. Uh, this is, I like it way more than I thought when I got the pen, when I first got it, I thought, oh, that's so tiny. Uh, but then when I started using it, I absolutely love this pen. It's in my pocket all the time. Um, I use it at bedtime with my daughter. So there's a little bit of a sentimental thing, I guess, but at bedtime we do some drawings and stuff together. Absolutely love this pen. And uh, I've even woken up in the morning and it's been in my pajama pants pocket. I fell asleep with this little pen. So these are my top five plus one. Let's get to the bottom of the barrel. So before I open up the bag to reveal my top five worst pens of 2021, I gave some honorable mentions. I, I only have one, and this will probably anger a lot of people, but it's this little teeny pen. This is the Caveco Sport. I really wanted to like this pen. I've tried them out in person before, and I thought, eh, it's just too small for me. I just didn't like it. I've tried it out again at a pen meet. Same conclusion. But they're just so popular. I see so many pictures and they look so great. I bought one. Um, it's really well made. Again, nothing. I mean, the nib was pretty bad. This was probably the worst uh, writing nib out of the box I've ever had. It needed a ton of adjustment and it was tough to do because it was so small. And my big hands was tough to do. But it, you know, when it posts, it does fit okay. But it is, it's a very small diameter uh, on that section. And I just can't quite get comfortable with this pen. It's cool that it's got the little converter. It's not amazing, but it works. Also takes your cartridges and stuff. So yeah, just not big into the pen, even though I want to be. I think it looks really sharp. Uh, on a you know positive note, my daughter absolutely loves this pen. We take this one. This is like a little special treat for her, a travel pen if we go on a bit of a trip. So we went to Tofino and uh, up the island a bit more, just came back. She used this pen and she loves it. So she loves it. It's just not my cup of tea. All right, so here is the top five worst pens of 2021. Now, again, all these are just my own personal thoughts. So if some of my favorites you think shouldn't be in there, that's your choice. If some of my bottom five shouldn't be in the poo bag, I get it. This is my personal preference. No doubt some people will be upset about what I pull out of here. But the first pen to pull out is the Twisby VAC 700 r iris yeah i know it's there's nothing wrong with this pen at all it, it's very pretty it's got the vac filler system i feel it's reasonably priced and reasonably well made they got this uh titanium nitride coating on there really great little pen i i just don't use it that much um i think it's maybe has to do with the whole section and transition it writes really well the wetness is good the smoothness is good all those things you'd want in a pen it's a fair size and the demonstrator is kind of cool and these accents are great, but for whatever reason or another, I just, I don't find myself using it. I used it a lot when I first got it, of course, but really haven't used it that much since. And uh, yeah, again, you might love this pen and I don't, I agree that you probably would, but for some reason, I'm not big into this one. Next up is this beautiful piece of artwork. This is a Live In You pen. Again, I got this because it was very pretty, very gorgeous. I had to get myself something for Christmas last year. The wife's like, pick out yourself a pen or something. So I looked online and I saw these ones. I thought, okay, it didn't come until the new year. So that's how I counted it for the 2021 season. But Again, I, I got drawn in by this beautiful pattern and colors and the depth and all that layering they got in there, which is really great. Um, you know, sharp looking little pen, nothing really wrong with it. Doesn't have a roll stop, so it kind of does come off the desk, although they give you a pen holder for it. Uh, but for whatever reason, again, it is quite slick, like it's, it's almost overly polished, overly smooth. It, it does move around on my fingers, any little bit of grease or perspiration and it's kind of slipping a bit. And also just how it writes. I mean, it's got a fine nib, so that's typically not an overly exciting nib to begin with, but for whatever reason, again, it writes normal, just regular, but there's just nothing exciting about this pen. I use it every now and then just because I think I should use it. 
um, but I usually swap it out just as soon as I swap it in. So this again didn't uh, didn't fare well for me in 2021. The supreme leader might have me assassinated for saying it, but it's this pen here from North Korea. I don't even know the name of it other than it's a North Korean pen. This was new old stock. Now I'm keeping it just because you can't really come across these that much and it's pretty interesting and unique. But as far as a pen goes, uh, this is a $2, $3 pen at best. It happens to have a gold nib, which is kind of neat and surprising. But overall build quality, that little Jinhao 86 I showed you is a far <laughs> superior pen. That's right, Kim. Your pen sucks. But uh, it is an interesting piece nonetheless. The nib is kind of weird. It's a 12 carat and uh, it's bent over in the front and the nose there. So it is neat. It does lay down a thicker line in reverse writing. And so it, it is sort of useful in that regard. I use it every now and then. It writes fine. It doesn't seem to dry out or anything. It does okay. Uh, the filling system is kind of weird. It's a captive converter, squeegee, not even converter, but you know, squishy filler. Um, the materials are just quite cheap. There's, it's... Yeah, it's a garbage pen. It is a trash pen, but uh, I, I didn't pay too much for it, and I'm just going to keep it all the same, but not really a great top-notch pen. These last two pens to come out of the turd bag are legitimately bad for many reasons. This one being the Moon Man M8. Let's show you what all the things about the pen. It looks so pretty online. Uh, all those nice little sparkles and flowers, but things like this. Now, again, keep in mind, this pen has barely been used. It, I literally done the review and that was about it, but there's all these bubbles happening in here. I don't know how this construction is done, but if I even push my finger on them, it's, it sort of removes it. So I don't know what's happening. Something is peeling off of something else, but, um, you know, you can make it go away. There's like some area that got trapped in here or something delaminated, but there's all these bubbles, the things coming apart all on its own without really any usage. The, uh, the threading here on the cap the threads actually have just pulled out of the cap. The ones on here are not good. The plating, if you can see that it's already peeling off, it's been inked once and the peeling, the uh, gold plating, <laughs> gold plating is coming off the pen these threads here are, are pretty bad that's again in machine shop terms that's called a rattling piss fit so like it just they yeah, just make it fit whatever i don't care how it feels that's how these threads are on there which kind of drives me a bit bonkers you know me and my threads and then same with this insert just how they made that how they attached it there's a gap in it uh, and even the alignment of it the pen body is out of whack it's even a little bit crooked so there's just a lot of things as far as build wise goes and for whatever i paid maybe it was 38 or 40 bucks there's a lot of options that you could do much better than this guy and the worst of the worst the creme de la crap the captain of turd mountain is the lamb b230 88 so i even overpaid and this thing was dirt cheap now these things are on for uh five dollars on aliexpress and they're not worth a single penny other than you get one to see how bad it is i guess now it looks sharp on the outside i had to do some work on this pen just to get it to to write and everything and again the uh I think I was, like I said, I think I was just in an exceptionally cheery, chipper mood when I did the review because I really should have been much more harsh. It does click, um, but it's pretty trash. The whole mechanism is ridiculous. How you have to take this apart, the just everything, just on a daily usage basis, this thing is trash. And then when you do get it to write, it does an absolutely terrible job. It dries out all the time. The nib is not very nice, but um, then there is this. I have never seen a nib do this this bad to me on any pen. So it is the all-time champion nib burger pen. I think it's the world record holder. I'm, I think I'm actually just going to fill the converter and see how giant that gnarly knob can grow on this pen. But as you can see, there are many reasons this pen won the creme de la crap worst pen of 2021 award from me again if you have this pen and you adore it and you're just fuming 
hey, that's great. Let's have a debate. Uh, let you know, show me in the comments what your pens, your top five or worst five of the year were. I'd love to hear from you. But at least for me, this is the clear standout winner. We're going to leave it there for now with some of my favorite pens, some honorable mentions, and some of my least favorite pens for the year. Now, again, look, hey, if I put your favorite pen in the turd bag and that upsets you, that's okay. You can tell me in the comments, but I'm not going to get really into it and care too much because here's the deal. I like some pens you don't like, and you're going to like some pens I don't like, and that's the way the things go. So anyways, if you're ever in Tofino, if that's a banging cup of coffee, Congratulations to everyone who won a nib on the 12 days of Nibmas. Had a bunch of fun doing that. Merry Christmas once again to everybody, however you are celebrating. Thanks for watching, supporting me throughout the year. Got some more videos coming up. And until then, we'll catch you next time.